Okay, get ready to have your mind totally blown away. Have you worked with the Vertex before in astrology? Well, the Vertex shows you your fated destiny. It shows you not only fated people that you will meet, but your fated days where your destiny can unfold right before your very eyes. It's when your soul collides with your destiny. It is great for timing techniques. And you guys, I am going to tell you so many secrets. I am so excited for this video. I've been wanting to do this video for you guys for years. If you are interested in fate, destiny, or soulmates, listen up. Also, I'm going to get real personal in this video. I usually save that for my members only, but there are some magical dates that happened in my life that I'm going to share with you and I am going to blow your mind. And I'm just so excited to show you all of this. I'm going to give you a timing technique. I'm going to give you a true love technique, destiny, fate techniques. If you don't already know me, my name is Meredith and I own Soul Navigation. I have a phenomenal team of readers over here. You can find out all about me at Soul navigation.com. I've been teaching and studying and practicing evolutionary astrology for more than 23 years. Let's dive in. The Vertex. It's spelled V-E-R-T-E-X. Okay. It's modern astrology. You're not going to find this in classical astrology. You're not going to find this in Hellenistic astrology. This was discovered, I believe, in the early half of the 20th century. I've heard 1940. I've also heard 1920. I did not look up the date, but I do know that the man who discovered this point in the sky is Edward Jondro. He was just a genius and he was really, really good at financial astrology. I started working with the Vertex um, about 10 years ago and it was really like shell shocking and it kind of blew me away. And then <gasps> it showed up in my own life. You are going to die. So stay to the very end of this video and I will show you the charts of what happened to me. I do want to know if you have been working with the Vertex in your own astrology. And if not, what I want you to do is get out your gorgeous natal chart. Hopefully you bought one from me from my shop. You can click the link in the notes below to find out where my store is. You can see all my reports and my gorgeous natal chart. We usually put the Vertex in there. If you need a gorgeous natal chart with the Vertex in there, when you email us to teamsoulnavigation at gmail.com to send in your birth info, just say, I'd like the Vertex in there as well. And the wonderful Brittany who runs my store, she'll put it in there. The Vertex connects your soul to your destiny. And it also reveals soul mates. Now, soul mates are not always life mates. They're not always marriage mates. And they're not always um, longevity mates. For example, there was a man who saved my life. He was in my life for probably 12 minutes, but without him, I would not have lived. I don't know what his astrology was because I was 12 years old, but he did in fact save my life. I never even got his name. I don't know who he is. Um, I'll never find him. I bet you anything, we had a vertex connection. You can have many soulmates. I believe in soul pods where we incarnate to a pod of people rather than dolphins or whales. We play out roles with them that we signed up for before we incarnated in this lifetime. That's actually a piece of evolutionary astrology, and I am an evolutionary astrologer, so I do believe in reincarnation. Now, you can still learn from me, even if you don't believe in reincarnation, because you can probably still believe in the concept of soulmates. I just believe that we contracted with these soulmates before we got here. You might just believe that you contracted with them once we got here. Up to you, not pushing that on anybody. The vertex can reveal to you your fate and your destiny. It can time your fate and destiny, and it is used primarily as a timing technique, but you can also use it in synastry to see your soulmate and to see the kinds of soulmates that you attract. We're going to get all into it, so get ready. I want you to get your gorgeous natal chart and um, anybody else's gorgeous natal chart that you want to look at while I'm talking to you in this video because I want you to look up certain things. It's going to be exciting. So unlike the seventh house cusp or the planets in the seventh house, or we could just call that the descendant, I believe those are earthbound loves, earthbound relationships that are significant partnerships for you. But I believe those are more in the earthbound realm. I believe the north node is also your fate and your destiny in a way, but truly it is your soul's purpose. It is the contract that you incarnated into and you will start preparing 
pain and it will probably be a little bit uncomfortable for you to do your north node, but it is your north star and where you're headed and the part of you that you're supposed to grow in your south node is where you come from and it tells your entire past life story. Where the vertex is a destined moment in this lifetime and it is a destined person or a fated person um, who is going to come into your life and reshape it. And you will probably never be the same again. You will transform. You will change. Your life um, will change in some mega way, like the man that saved my life. We could also say the vertex shows us how you subconsciously attract soulmates. The vertex does represent the subconscious. It's kind of hard to navigate your vertex because your vertex is something outside of your free will. It's almost like the part of you that it just surrenders. It sort of magically shows up in its own faded way shows up. It's not like Mars, where you're getting up and going and chasing it and grabbing it and wanting it and manifesting it. No, it is already in play without you doing anything. Your vertex by sign, house, and degree does not mean that your soulmate will have their sun sign be also at your vertex's degree, okay? So it doesn't mean that. So you have to listen a little bit more deeply because there's a lot of different ways to work with the vertex. There's four major ways and they're all big time big, big, big time. The other videos that I saw on the Vertex are very simplistic. They're like six minutes long. Okay, people, I could talk to you about the Vertex for probably seven days straight and still not cover it all. Your soulmate isn't necessarily going to have your Vertex degree as their sun sign or their moon sign, but they will probably have something profound in their chart that interacts with your Vertex. The vertex is a point in the chart. It is not a planet. It is not a luminary. It is just a space. Now, I am an astrologer that believes that this particular point in the chart is extraordinarily potent, powerful, and sensitive. And I believe, and I just got chills saying that, literally, I just got chills all over my whole entire body. I'm telling you, this is the magic spot in your chart. If you want to, you can tell me where your vertex is in your chart by sign, degree, and how. I should say something very important here. You have to know your exact birth time down to the minute to have an accurate vertex. And that is because the vertex moves super fast. For all those people that don't know their birth time, do not fret. You can get a reading with me. And if you know your birth day, if you know the day you were born, we can together through an interview process. I'll probably need a 90 minute reading because it is quite a long process because I got to go through all the minutes of the day, but I can narrow it down pretty quickly by asking you pointed questions. You have to come with an open heart and open mind and be um, trusting because I have to ask you probably really deep questions to resurrect, if you will, or rectify your birth chart so we could get it down to the minute. You could work also with anybody on my team to do a rectification. And even if you think you have your correct birth time, it might be helpful to do a rectification because I'm telling you, I think a lot of doctors and a lot of nurses, you know, they're busy in the labor and delivery room. You get pulled out, you get washed off and they're like, oh yeah, well, you know, especially in the sixties, right? If you're born in the sixties, what was the time? Um, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that, that clock's 505. And they didn't have one of these, right? So nothing was accurate. The time is as good as the batteries in the clock on your wall. And also we twisted the time, the hands, right? Like we twisted the big hand and the little hand. And who knows, the person who was doing the clock, their eye might have been off. In order to truly work with the vertex, you really do need to have your birth time pinpoint precise. When you do know your vertex, um, I will tell you, it is also precisely accurate. It is scary accurate. It is scary, massively incredible enormously big time. I'm going to show you. Astronomically, it's where the prime vertical, which is straight overhead, where it meets the elliptical. That little point, it's usually near the equator. The reason why that is significant is because it really will only show up on the right-hand side of the chart through the houses five through eight, the fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth house. On rare occasion, it will go into the fourth house and the ninth house. And if you have it in the fourth house or the ninth house, that is very rare, very unique. And I'm wondering if there even is anybody out there who's watching this channel. If you have your vertex in the fourth or the ninth, and if you do, where do you live? <laughs> um, I'm really curious because you definitely 
probably don't live in the United States. You probably live somewhere a little bit more unique. Some astrologers call this the auxiliary descendant because it's like the descendant, but it brings in soul mates, where the descendant brings in earthbound relationships, you know, like mere mortals, right? This is a soul contract, and this is where you will find soul mates. Some astrologers call it, I've heard, a third angle. Officially, the astrological definition is a fated meaning or encounter or event or person that you met through absolutely no effort or will on your own part. It is totally beyond your control, but ultimately and automatically, this is where your soul encounters its destiny. And when your vertex is aspected, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about it. The vertex can bring in big destined turning points in your life where it can completely transform your life forever for good and also sadly for bad. When it's activated, it has it will create something extraordinary, something out of the blue, something profound and powerful, and it may feel like a coincidence to you like, oh yeah, you know, well. but it's really a fated experience with people or places that will eventually really matter to you. But in the moment, you might have thought it was no big deal. Oh, this person offered to buy me an ice cream cone and I don't know, wasn't that big of a deal. But then it turned out to be, right? For good or for bad, we don't know. This is what I want you to do. Promise me, promise me, promise me you will do this now that you and I are friends through YouTube. Promise me you will keep in your calendar the events that take place in your life on a daily basis. I mean, I can go back to 2005 and I can tell you exactly what time something happened. Why? Because the timing of events is critical. And that is how you will be able to write the astrological documentary of your life. I paid very close attention to when I got married, what the exact minute was when I said, I do. I also looked at the exact moment of time of when I got divorced. I wrote those dates and times down. So promise me you will start to do the same with your life. And if you don't know, go back in time and figure it out. Be a detective in your own life and figure out, when did I receive that bad news? What was the time of death of my brother, sister, mother, loved one? What time did they take their last breath? What time did we, and what day did we first say, I love you? right? And write those dates down and put them in your calendar. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the degree of your vertex in your chart. And then we are going to look at transits to that degree. Transits to your vertex by other planets are when it is activated. I can also say it shows up in synastry. So when people you have met have key planets on that vertex point in your chart, you can expect some turning in your destiny and in your fate. And sometimes it is more significant than other times. Now, not every single person that you meet that touches your vertex, if you will, is your soulmate. Oftentimes it can be. You have to also see what you do to their chart. And I like to look at it in a pattern. I like to check the vertex with another person in four different ways. And if it lines up in the four different ways, I'm like, holy moly, guacamole. This is something. I don't usually, however, go into situations knowing about the vertex. I usually look at the vertex in hindsight to see, did this really matter? Sometimes you don't even realize the effect that the person will have on you or how important the event really was. But if you have a pattern of vertex connections, it probably means there is a destiny that wants to be played out between the two of you because it moves so quickly. I mean, in a blink of an eye, it's already at the next degree. So we can only take an orb of one and I will stretch it to two. I don't really love it at two, especially if it's like at two and a half, then it's a no-go. But one, one and a half, absolutely. Two, we're stretching it. So we're really talking about exact to one, one and a half degrees. I'll give it to you if it's a two. So if you don't understand what I just said, I just said that it only is considered to make an aspect if it is within one degree of your vertex or one and a half at the most two. So now for the secrets. I'm going to talk to you about what does it mean to have the vertex in the different houses. Now remind yourself that the vertex is only going to be on the right-hand side of the chart between the fifth house and the eighth, most likely, and sometimes the fourth through the ninth. But it's not going to be found in the tenth or the third or the second. I want you 
you to remember the vertex works at a subconscious level, at a level that you are not aware of. Okay. You might be able to feel your vertex though. You really might be able to feel it operating in your chart. And you'll have to let me know if you do feel it. I will tell you, mine is so prominently placed in my chart. It is so gargantuanly loud because of the planets that it conjuncts, because of the position that it's at, because of its ruler, that I definitely feel my vertex. And I definitely feel when my vertex is activated because I usually bubble over with absolute excitement, glee, and joy, so much so that some people think that my happiness is false or superficial or fake. No, it's actually not. It's actually that big. And also, sometimes I feel the dread of it if there's a negative aspect and a fear for no reason. And that can be really uncomfortable. So you'll have to see if you feel this sense of destiny when it's happening or when you go back into hindsight, if you knew, wow, this was an important event and I had that feeling about it. So the vertex is what you are sub consciously attracting. Listen to me. You're not manifesting it. You're attracting it because it has already been willed to be in your life. You're manifesting your North Node. You're manifesting your seventh house relationships, right? But this is sort of your destiny relationships. You chose it, but you chose it when you incarnated. So the sixth house, this is telling us if your vertex is in the sixth house, that your work, your clients, your health and wellness can be so significant to you regarding your destiny, regarding fated encounters and fated situations and uh, fated um, experiences in your life. The place that this could occur is your workplace, your own studio, wherever you work out. It could also be through your animals. And I know that might sound funny, but if you have a sixth house vertex, animals, small animals are magical to you. And you might meet or have fated experiences, moments, or soulmates that come to you through animals, through the dog park, the horse training facility. I don't know, maybe you're a bull rider and you met somebody at the rodeo. I have no idea. But animals are huge for you. Also, health and wellness is an enormous, enormous part of your destiny. So you could be dealing with and overcoming an illness or a situation with your health or you could be an inspiration inside of health and wellness. We have to look at the planets' aspects, the, the planets in your chart, their aspects to the vertex to see more about the story. But I just wanted to give you the subject matter. I also want to tell you a secondary piece to the sixth house. And if you really want to learn about the sixth house, go watch my very short video. It's six minutes long about the sun in the sixth house because I go deep into six minutes long of what the sixth house really stands for. And that video is important if you you have your vertex in the sixth house because those subject matters, those arenas of life will become absolutely enormous to you because they will become a very strong piece of your destiny. So one thing that I will say is nurses are very important to you. Doctors are very important to you. You might fall in love with the doctor, somebody in the medical um, health care, somebody who is in service to you. It might be Lady Chatterley's lover and you might fall in love with the gardener. I'm not joking. Or the plumber, somebody who came over and I don't know, fixed your dishwasher. I have a beautiful client who absolutely is madly in love with her gardener for real. And she's just like, yeah, it's the best love affair of my life. This is somebody who you could be in service to. You could actually fall in love with your boss. Your boss could fall in love with you. And I also want to say that you could easily fall in love with a guru or a mentor. This is also the house of aunts and uncles. And Stephen, my teacher, has talked a lot about the influence of aunt and uncles. So you might find that your nieces and nephews are so important to you. Like maybe you didn't have your own children, but maybe you inherited your niece and nephew. That's the sixth house. Let's talk about why did I start with six? I didn't even start with the fifth. <laughs> Let's go to the fifth now. Yeah, we're just mixing it up for you. So I think it likes being here because it's the house of love affairs. It's the house of joy. Did you guys see my video? And I did this for my members only. How to see joy in the chart. Do you have a joyful chart? Um, how much joy do you have in your life? Natural joy. Now I know happiness is an inside job, but do you come with an easy relationship to being joyful or 
are you kind of a naysayer and a little bit of a realist or pessimist? No criticism there. We need all kinds of people. But the fifth house is an optimistic, joyful, playful house. And if you have your vertex there, then you have a lot of destiny around happiness. I'm just going to be honest with you. Children are really important to you and you could actually meet your soulmate or your soulmate could even be a child. Now, obviously, I don't mean that in a sexual way. I mean that in a soulful way. So children are absolutely critical to the growth of you and you have incarnated into a lifetime that um, you will have platonic great love for children, a love with children. You might like adore your child. You might just fall madly in love with your first child. Again, I mean this in just such a soul-fulfilling way. Your children are really important to you, and children are really important to you. Your children might be a game-changing event for you. So maybe they completely turn yourself and your world into like a whole new destiny. You may have had to work hard for your child, and so you celebrate your child, and you celebrate your child's life with tremendous joy and glee. You might even be a little bit obsessed with your own kid because they're so important to you. But you could meet or have faded encounters around school events, athletic events, sports events, like sports arena, the football game. Also, um, fairs, like a Ferris wheel, the carnival, if you will, the fair. And also wherever you play, wherever your playground is, your adult playground is, that's where you could have fated encounters. So if you love music, maybe you meet somebody at a concert. If you love poker, maybe you meet somebody at the poker game. If you love, you know, hiking the mountain, uh, maybe you meet somebody on a hike or maybe you meet somebody at the theater or the ballet or singing karaoke. Anything that has this childlike glee and euphoria in it. This is um, the house of love affairs and lovers. And so lovers really can, children too, but lovers can really change your whole life, change the whole course of your life. You, just on a subconscious level, will have a childlike feeling inside your relationships, and you will want your relationships to be fun, exciting, thrilling, like a good time, um, and forever playful and forever young. You'll probably be a forever young, forever playful partner. You're going to dance into your old age. Yeah, you're going to be the 100-year-old still doing yoga. <laughs> I already did the sixth house, but I want to do a little addendum, and that is, is that there's going to be a need to be of service inside your relationship. You're really going to like doting on your partner and you might like being doted on, but there is a helpfulness inside of partnership if you have your vertex in the sixth house and there is a real sense of duty and service. Now the seventh house, marriage and union and partnership tend to be a giant subconscious need, desire, and situation for these people. There is a very strong fated element that you will be in partnership. That doesn't always mean married, but it does mean partnership. So it's not just a marriage. This is somebody who does partnerships. Now you will probably have fated encounters around your seventh house unions. Fated encounters could come through other people, through business partners, through mutual friends that are married. It could come through the legal door because this does rule contracts and the legal arena of life. This is also a house of diplomacy, of harmony. So any place that feels like your happy place, your harmonious place, your peaceful place, um, a place where you negotiate deals, negotiate contracts is a place where you could have fated encounters. Remember with this being Venus's house, this is a place where harmony is created and balance. So wherever you go to create harmony and balance becomes a very, very big part of your destiny. So where do you go to connect with people or with partners? Where do you go to have conversation about life, right? Like dinner or whatever, dinner at the restaurant. So this is going to be taking place wherever you go to connect with people. Usually, if you have your vertex in the seventh house, you really do believe in love. You really do believe in union. You feel happier together than apart. You're probably even looking for love, although you don't need to look for your uh, soulmate connection because it's already contracted to most likely have one. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a longevity, right? The vertex doesn't show you how long somebody is with you. It just shows you that 
there is a desire to have deep union with another person. You probably really long for that kind of forever union or love union. Let's talk about the eighth house. The vertex in the eighth house is at the subconscious level, a person who is going to have a deep relationship with transforming. Transforming is another word for changing, changing at the soul level, changing at the karmic level, and their destiny is changing. It also has to do with finances. Somebody, right, helping you out financially, and it can also be you investing in others financially by paying it forward. You could also meet somebody through, ironically, death, through grief, when you're grieving at a funeral, um, through hospice, there's also a huge sexual component here. Sex is a huge expression with having the vertex here and having sexual union is really, really important. You could also meet somebody who's, you know, into sex therapy. Sexual experience could really have a huge turning point in your life. If you have negative aspects, I have a client who has her vertex in the eighth house and her husband, her husband gave her an STD, you know, five years after they were married. So that changed her life forever, right? She was never the same again. Yeah. He didn't have the STD when they met. Mm -hmm. Sex is a huge, huge turning point. There's transformation through sexual expression or sex. And these people also kind of like to be fully consumed inside their relationship in some way. There is a huge bond that is usually desired. Now, you could meet somebody in any arena that is involved with sex, death, or taxes. So I don't know, maybe you fall in love with somebody who worked as a sex worker at one time in their life or who was a stripper at one time in their life. I don't know. I don't judge. After 23 years of readings, I've seen it all. And I accept all people and all pathways and all the different ways that lead to your personal soul's destiny. Now, let's talk about if it's in the fourth house, it signifies that there's a real karmic relationship coming through your family, your heritage, your roots, your home, your mom. There is something so important about your house. So maybe you're having a dinner party and somebody actually comes to your home or you um, have this really big turning point around your house. But I'm telling you, your heritage, this could also be the the arranged marriage, if you will, through your mother. Your mother is very, very important. You'll have to look at your moon to see if this is true. But your heritage and where you came from and figuring out maybe where you came from is really critical to you. And there is a desire here to bond so deeply, just like the eighth house, that it can feel even all-consuming. Now, the ninth house, there will be this fated relationship through travel, maybe maybe even cosmopolitan travel, foreigners, people that are different than you, foreign food, foreign music, foreign dance, foreign culture. Also, while you're in the pursuit of your highest self, self-mastery. So that could be at, you know, I don't know, a life coaching event. That could be where you are learning higher education. You know, you're getting your master's degree, your PhD. This could also be where you are attending some seminar, or this could be through church or your own religion or your own belief system. But you will probably have huge turning points around the subject matter of pursuing your truth. Tell me where you have your vertex. And if you have your vertex in the fourth and the ninth, I really want to know. I have to talk to you about the anti-vertex. And the anti-vertex is just like the south node is to the north node. It is the exact opposite point to your vertex. And this is still very, very, very karmic sensitive point. And it is equally as important. It just doesn't show up in the chart. So you have to write it in. So if your vertex is at five degrees Scorpio, you know your anti-vertex is five degrees Taurus. Somebody who sits on that anti-vertex is opposing your vertex and conjuncting your anti-vertex, that is huge. So you really do need to know both those points in your chart and memorize them. It is still extremely important. I think the anti-vertex is very interesting because there's sort of a comfort zone with the anti-vertex. Um, it's somebody who sort of automatically makes you feel pretty comfortable. Also, I have to say, now talking about the different planets, that will cross or natally sit in aspect to your vertex. Some planets truly are harder to have in aspect to your vertex, and they might be harder to deal with on your vertex, like Sun, Mars, Moon, Uranus, Pluto. Those are harder planets 
to have on your vertex. It doesn't mean your destiny is fated to be just doomed. But I will tell you, there is a very big fate. There is a very big will. There is a very big destiny to your life and you probably feel like it. Now, the moon, Venus, and Jupiter might be a little bit easier and even lovelier to have in aspect to your vertex, but it's not always the case because sometimes that can bring in really unhealthy love boundaries. You could be love bombed, right? And it could be disgusting. And sometimes the vertex works well in the person who's love bombing you. They have all this vertex aspect going on. Maybe their Jupiter is on your, and you might not feel it. So we need to see it in both people's charts and hopefully it's mutual. You might be their lesson. You might be their lesson in no thank you. So aspects to the other planets are critical. If your vertex has really hard aspects to your sun, Mars, Pluto, or even the ascendant or Saturn or Uranus or Neptune, that's tough inside your own natal chart. If you are having a transit to your vertex that is difficult, we'll know that it's probably fleeting. It's probably not going to be too long unless it's one of the outer planets. But if it's the moon, you know, it's quick. So you need to kind of know the timing of the planets, right? Now you have to realize that if your planets are in hard aspect to the vertex, when transiting planets cross your vertex, those hard aspects from the planets in your chart to the vertex are going to be triggered. So it's really important to study the aspects from all the different planets to your vertex. Now remember, the vertex is just a little point in the chart. So the vertex does not make an aspect to planets, but planets can make an aspect to the vertex because the vertex is not a luminary, nor is it a planet. It's just a spot. It's just a place. It's just a mathematical calculation. Now, if your vertex is in a position where the other planets make really positive aspects to it, well, then when the sun or the moon or Pluto crosses your vertex, well, then it's going to trigger those positive aspects. And if you're like most people, you will probably get a little bit of a mixed bag. You will get both good aspects and challenging aspects, easy aspects and kind of harder aspects. And that will be sort of a mixed bag of fate, destiny, and karma colliding with your soul. And that, my friends, is called life. What I'm going to do for my members only extended content video for my super supporters and my superstar super supporters is I'm going to go through all the different planets, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, and what they mean in synastry and in your natal chart when they are in aspect to your vertex by conjunction, by square, trines, sextiles, and oppositions. That's what I look at when I look at the vertex. I only look at the major aspects. I don't look at the sesky quadrant. I don't look really at the quincunxes, but I do look at those major aspects. And so for my members only, if you're not a member, come join us. It's all, it's less than 10 cents a day. Come join us and learn deeper astrology with me because I'll be able to go deeper into all of those different planets and how they affect your vertex, okay? But that is just so deep. I don't have the time to do it here, but I want you to know that information. So if you are a member, a super supporter or superstar super supporter, um, look for that extended content coming up. Now, the next thing I want to tell you is, can you change your fated encounters? Can you change your destiny? Well, some astrologers say no, your destiny is your destiny. And I say yes and no. Now, you may not be able to avoid meeting the person or you might not be able to avoid the encounter or the major life event that will occur. But I would like to say yes, kind of, because you can change your approach. You can change through your free will the decisions that you make around that destined activity or moment or encounter. I know, and you know, that happiness is an inside job and healthy people, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically healthy people have usually an easier time with creating happiness. It is very hard to be super sick and peaceful. Believe me, I know. Trust me, I have a chronic illness, I know. And I have to sometimes work harder at keeping my joy and keeping my happiness. But you can do it. If you are healthy in those ways, it is a little easier to manage and to navigate your free will and how you will handle this 
turning point. You can use your vertex in four different ways. One, you can just look at it in your natal chart. Look at it in your natal chart and look at the aspects that it makes. You can look at your vertex with a transit chart. So where are the planets in the sky today and how are they interacting with your vertex? You can also look at the transits from your progressed vertex to your natal chart. You can also just look at your vertex in your progress chart to the other planets in your progress chart to see how your vertex has changed and how your life is within relationship to your vertex right now. You can also look at your progress chart and use it with a current transit chart. So go back and rewind, go back and rewind what I just said. And the fourth way, this one's really, really important, and I didn't get to spend any time on this yet. You can look at your solar return chart and see where your vertex is for you and how it's operating for this year. Your solar return chart is so important to look at. And if you want to get your solar return package in my shop, you can do so. You'll get your solar return chart when you write in to team soul at gmail.com with your birth information because you need to do that so we can make it for you. You need to tell Brittany at team soul navigation that you want the vertex inside your solar return chart too so you can see the theme in which the vertex is bringing to you by fate and destiny this year, and it will change. For the purposes of today, I want to stress a few things. I'm probably going to have to do a part two on this video, but first, I want you to master the vertex in your natal chart. Then, if you've already got your progressed package or your astro gold package from me, then you have your progressed chart. Now, the progressed report inside those two packages won't be talking about the vertex. You're going to have to do that on your own through looking at your progressed chart. And you can see where the vertex is in your progress chart. And you can look and see if it's making any major aspects within a one to one and a half, maybe two degree orb to anything else in the progress chart. And then look and see if that vertex is making any aspects by one to one and a half, maybe two degrees to your natal planets in your natal chart. Now for members, I'm also going to show you how to use the progress chart, the solar return chart, and the transits chart using your vertex. So I'm going to do that in that video as well. Remember, we're using the aspects of the conjunction, the opposition, the squares, the trines, and the sextiles. Now, if you don't know what any of this means, I really highly recommend that you go to soulnavigation.com, you click on Learn Astrology with Meredith, and you just purchase my masterclass. Because in that, I go deep into aspects aspects and um, it will really help you read a natal chart. So this is kind of advanced, but it's also kind of easy once you get it. Um, and I want you to know about your destiny. Here's a few little instructions for you to see how your vertex functions. And the vertex is, again, going to show you also your approach, your subconscious approach and your desires around relationships. It's in the, the houses five through eight, sometimes four and nine, because the vertex is about relationships. It's about your destiny with other people. It's about your turning point and your fate with others others. It, it, the anti-vertex is about yourself. The anti-vertex is not a negative thing. It's like a magnet. And these two work together, right? Write it into your chart. I want you to keep that in mind when you're looking for aspects. And if you have an aspect to your anti-vertex, you know that you will also have an aspect to your vertex. So first, I want you to look at the sign in which your vertex is in. Then I want you to look at the house it is in. You should then watch my six-minute video series on the house in which your vertex is in. So if your vertex is in the fifth house, I want you to watch my video called The Sun in the Fifth House. If it's in the sixth house, watch my video called The Sun in the Sixth House. You can just search for it on my channel. Now, I want you to blend the sign in the house together, and that shows us your approach to relationships, and it shows us your destiny around relationships. The third thing you're going to do is you're going to look to see if the vertex is in harmony or if it is in challenge to the vertex's ruler. So if your vertex is in Sagittarius in the fifth house, you're going to go find Jupiter. Now, it doesn't have to be in harmony by aspect, that's one or two degrees, but is it at least in harmony by sign? So you know that fire signs like fire, air signs like air, water signs like water, and earth signs like earth. You also know that fire likes air, 
And we know that water likes earth. So is it in harmony or is it in challenge? By sign, it would be great if it's in harmony and it's in aspect, one or two degrees. Now, the harmonious aspects, I would say, are the opposition because if it's in opposition, that means that ruler is sitting on the anti-vertex and that is cool. So let's say you have your vertex in Sagittarius. So you go look at Jupiter. Let's say Jupiter is in Gemini opposite to your vertex. Well, we know then Jupiter is conjunct the antivertex. And so that means you're probably a very inspiring person and you probably are going to attract um, a soul connection that values you Gemini, right? Gemini is um, going to like how you communicate. Um, and you probably are going to feel quite in awe of, and you might even feel like this person is a little bit, dare I say, smarter than you, knows more than you, a visionary, somebody fascinating to you. And that Jupiter is on your anti-vertex. It's opposing your vertex. And so it is operating in the magnetic field and it's cool. So if you've got your ruler in trine, in sextile, in opposition, I know that sounds funny, but in opposition or in conjunction to your vertex, that's pretty lovely. Even with hard planets, that's going to be really fascinating. Now, if you have it in square, that's going to bring in more challenges. And that just means that you probably are going to, it doesn't mean it's going to be a bad destiny. It means your fated encounters will require sweat equity, focus, drive, ambition. I mean, you're probably, you know, you're the triathlete. You don't get it for free eating potato chips on the couch. You got to work a little bit for it. I really want you to look at the ruler of your vertex and is it in aspect to one or two degrees at the most? And or is it just in harmony by sign? It's lovely if it's in harmony by sign, but it really has a profoundness to it if it is also in aspect by trine, sextile, conjunction, or opposition. And if it is, if the ruler of your vertex is in a square, I will tell you that you probably like a challenge. You are probably not afraid of a challenge and you probably like a challenge. Okay, now the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to look and see if you have any planets that are one or up to two degrees away in major aspect, conjunction, square, trine, sextile, or opposition, those are the only ones we're using, is that planet Venus, the moon, or Jupiter in relationship to your vertex? Because those are going to bring in nurturing qualities that's the moon, feeling of great value, that's Venus, and being massively inspired, that's Jupiter. If you've got that in your own natal chart, say, um, your vertex in relationship and in harmonious relationship to moon, Venus, or Jupiter by conjunction, trine, sextile, or opposition, that's pretty massive. You probably are a very nurturing person, inspiring person, or a person who creates tremendous value for yourself and for others. And you probably crave that in your soulmate and your subconscious is bringing that type of energy to you. So I want to know your story if you've got that. You can also look at those aspects in synastry too, but right now we're just talking about what to do with your natal chart. If you have Mars, Sun, Saturn, Uranus, and even Pluto in tight aspect to your vertex, it does not matter which aspect. It doesn't matter if it's a conjunction in opposition, which is a conjunction to the antivertex, if it is a sextile, trine, or square. These are going to be a little bit more challenging. I'm just going to be honest with you. These are going to feel like when destiny rolls in, they're like, boom, right? They're really filled with really massive gunpowder, <laughs> right? So they're going to bring in tons of potential energy, kind of like a ballistic missile. And it's going to be intense and strong and competitive and ambitious and big time. This shows that you probably will resonate with really, really strong partners that create a big old boom in your life, right? I mean, look at Elvis Presley, right? We all love the new movie. It's like, boom, he just popped, right? He exploded 
this world. And so not all explosions are bad. It's not all Fukushima, but you probably are attracted to really strong partnerships, really intense partners. And you might even be a person who really thrives inside of crisis. And you could subconsciously just be receiving this. Now, remember, all things change as we grow, ascend, and progress through our lives. So this is why I talk a lot about the progress chart. The progress chart can bring in brand new energy into your life and you can work with your progress chart and even your solar return chart to see where am I this year? Okay, I was born with that and I understand that I have sort of a magnetic predisposition to attract a lot of challenges, to be challenged, maybe in a smart way. Maybe you're Bobby Fischer, you know, greatest chess player in the world. Uh, Maybe you like doing parkour. Maybe you are like one of my dear friends who is a professional weightlifter, bodybuilder, I should say, who's just like to die for. I don't like being challenged quite like that, but she certainly does. And so when I say challenged, I don't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing, but it's like you like quite possibly the thing that's going to challenge you, challenge you to a good match. And you really might thrive in crisis. And you might do even better in crisis than some souls that don't have the tension in their chart that yours might. Remember that the chart progresses. As you progress through life year by year, so does your chart. And that's why I love the progressed package. And I love that astro gold package because you can see your progressions and you can see where your vertex has progressed to. One of the things that I love to work with is I love our soul navigation intention jewelry. I wanted to wear this today. Look how gorgeous this is, but I couldn't get it on with my nails and I didn't have anybody home. This one is so beautiful. I hope you can see like the opal essence color. It's absolutely beautiful. So our beautiful Dawn Wonder makes these. They are so gorgeous. They hang a little bit low and they're on sale in in my shop if you want to look at the link below. This one is called the Angel Charm Amethyst Aura Quartz Crystal Necklace. And this is the Guardian Angel. This brings in divine love and this brings in soulmate connections. It is so breathtaking. It's kind of like rainbow iridescent amethyst flashes. And it's actually titanium and silver trace metals that create this color in, it is real aura quartz. Isn't it beautiful? You can also use it as a pendulum, but this helps you receive communication from your guardian angels, your crossed over loved ones, and it gives you divine protection and it actually attracts soulmate. Isn't that beautiful? So if you really love somebody, this is like the most gorgeous gift to give them or wear it yourself. I absolutely love it. And I was sad I couldn't put it on today. Um, But I just wanted to share with you guys that we have our absolutely enchanting intention collection designed by the amazing and beautiful Dawn Wonders. So I wanted to show you guys that. Let's also talk about a couple new really exciting secret things. I want you to take the natal chart and the progress chart. And I want you to take the progressed vertex and look at the progressed vertex in relationship to your natal planets and see if those natal planets make an aspect. It's going to be real easy to do because you're taking an orb of two degrees if they make an aspect to your progressed vertex. And that's significant because that means while that encounter wasn't necessarily contracted at birth, it is contracted for you right now in your lifetime at this time in your life. So it's pretty significant. And then you're going to take the progressed planets to the progressed vertex and look at it that way. And if you're getting similar messages from your natal chart to your progressed vertex to your natal chart and to your progressed vertex to your progressed planets, that's a pretty big deal. Then you're also going to do that with your solar return chart. And if you've got them in all four places, oh my God. So you're going to take that solar return chart. You're going to look at your solar return vertex. You're going to see if it makes contact with your progressed vertex, and you're going to also see if it makes contact with your natal vertex. So does it do that at all? Then you're going to look at your solar return chart, see if it makes that direct contact with any of your progressed planets. And of course, you're going to look and see if your solar return vertex makes any contact with your natal planets. And I should actually say that technically in reverse. It is a lot of information, but if you are getting this, let me no. Now, if you're feeling massively confused, totally overwhelmed, and you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about, then I just want you to do one thing, and that's work with your natal chart and start with that and just look at your vertex by sign and by house just to see what it's saying to you. Then by ruler, 
then you're going to go in and you're going to look at the aspects that it makes, just the major aspects that it makes to the other planets. And you're going to start to carve out your story. And if you're a member, I'm going to tell you about what those planetary aspects bring in in more detail. When you look at your solar return chart and you see where the heck your vertex is and what it's doing this year, and if it makes contact with your natal chart or your progress chart, it's like a triple whammy. It's just like so big. It is so giant. Now, if it's not, that doesn't mean that nothing's going to happen. It doesn't mean nothing's going to happen. This is just one technique of about 10 different techniques that I look at to see, is this a faded destined near for you? And there's way other things. There's like 10 other massive things that I can do to see how important is this year. If you have aspects in these four different ways, it's pretty big. If you even have a direct aspect in one of these different ways, it's pretty big. And if you have them in two or three, it's pretty big. So not every year are you going to have your vertex ignited. Also, and I think I have to do this in my next video because there's just so much to go over, but I really do want to talk about if you have your vertex's ruling planet in retrograde and how to look in the solar return chart and the progress chart to see the day that that ruler went direct by progression or in the solar return chart, because that can really liberate your vertex. So for example, my vertex's ruler is in retrograde. I can look at my solar return chart to see where is that ruler today? And is it still in a retrograde? Oh, it's not? Wow. Well, so my vertex is a little bit more out there. It's a little bit more liberated. I can also look to see when in my life, what day, what year, and even what time did my ruling planet of my vertex that was retrograde, what day in my life by progression did it go direct? If you have an early Mars retrograde, it might not go direct ever. If you have a Saturn or a Pluto retrograde and it's just at the beginning of the retrograde, by progression, it also may never go go direct. So not everybody will have their planet going direct. And we also know the sun and the moon don't retrograde. So if Mercury is your ruler, it will probably go direct via progression at some point in your life. And that's an important day to know. It's an important day when you're writing the the history of who you are, your destiny, your fate, because that's a day when your vertex got liberated, if you will, the sizzle, the pizzazz, the pop. And tell me if you guys want me to talk about it. Do you want me to talk about that? And I might just put that in my members only extended content video. By the way, are you guys coming to my retreat? Come learn with me in Seattle. It's going to be for three solid days at the iconic, gorgeous Pike's Place Market here in Seattle, Washington. It's my first annual retreat, and I hope you guys will come and join me and sign up. I would absolutely love it. There is still space available, and you can check it out in the notes below. So come learn with me. You're going to learn so much. Also, I want to tell you guys that you can look at massive events and you can usually see the vertex in a big way. Chernobyl, go check out the vertex at the time of that explosion. Big major events, maybe when Martin Luther King was assassinated. I haven't done these charts, but I'm pretty positive. By progression or by transit or solar return, if we took Martin Luther King's chart and we did a transits for that day or transits to progression, or solar return, we will see the vertex play out in a massive, massive way. When I first learned about the vertex, I learned about it from an astrologer named Brian Clark out of Australia. And he was teaching about soulmates and the vertex, and he was doing Angelina Jolie's and Brad Pitt's charts and their vertexes. I thought it was really interesting. Now, just know that it doesn't always mean that there's longevity, right? But they really did change each other's lives. I mean, they went on to have six kids and, you know, the divorce from hell. And um, Brad found his sobriety through that divorce. I don't know what Angelina has found, hopefully something, but I would say those people changed also because he let it, it forced him to leave his other relationship with Jennifer Aniston, which was kind of sad. I've seen Brad really mature and really grow and also get very soulful and very, very deep since this divorce. I think this divorce really devastated him, losing his children. I think it crushed his soul. Sometimes your destiny and your fate grows you out of crisis. It's really, really fascinating to look at life events, events out there in the world. And uh, you might see the events out there in the world and then how it affects you is differently than how it affected the world. The vertex does show up in destined, faded moments 
in time, in history as well. So I want to tell you a few really personal secrets, and I left it for the end, so maybe like nobody's here watching (laughs) to the end. On the day that I met my husband, the very first day, the vertex was at eight degrees Taurus. It was close to my north node in Taurus. By the way, I didn't know this at the time. I just went on this date with this gentleman. And I didn't even look because as an astrologer, I'm really tempted to look to see, oh, what is this going to be? But I had come to learn by this time to just let things be and feel my feelings and not analyze all up and in my head, which I have a tendency to do. So listen to this. The vertex when I first met him was at eight degrees Taurus, but because the vertex moves so fast, it moves about one degree every three or four minutes. So six minutes, just six minutes after saying hello to him and meeting him, unbeknownst to me, the vertex was literally sitting on my north node. And I remember about six minutes in, I thought he was so interesting, kind, sweet, a gentleman, and surprising. Yeah. He was also uniquely different than anybody else I'd ever met. I remember feeling uh, that he was really different than me. Like, he was so East Coast, and I am so West Coast. And I loved it. And that was my north node, my north node in Taurus at the top of my chart. It was like I saw something in him that I was not. Um, I don't have anything else in near to my Taurus north node. And that vertex on my north node was bringing in somebody who would maybe elevate me in a way, maybe make me feel nurtured in a Taurus way, um, maybe make me feel 10th house-ish, special, seen, right? And so what was interesting is you have to realize that the vertex, while it didn't make an aspect, but it did conjunct just a few minutes into our meeting. I also want to tell you this secret thing, and I thought it was so sweet. And now I think about the vertex, that day's vertex at that moment that we met, which the moment that you met, that chart is so important. So again, back to the calendar. If you're meeting somebody, even if you don't like them, put the exact time that you met them and the day that you met them and the year into your calendar. If you do go back to looking at the charts, you can see maybe why the charts didn't support the relationship. You can see maybe what the problem was and if and it will be good research for you, whether it works out or it doesn't work out. Maybe you guys will come back together years later. But anyways, I want to say that the vertex then crossed the transiting vertex crossed my north node. And what do you know? He asked me before I got there, what kind of wine do you like to drink? And I said, well, on a day like this, I think I'd like to drink a buttery Chardonnay. And do you know, he had one waiting for me because he knew I only had less than an hour to meet him for this first date because I was coordinating it with my busy life, whatever. And uh, he had he had a buttery Chardonnay waiting for me. Is that not Taurus North Node Vertex, right? In the 10th house. It was there on the stage waiting for me, the stage being the table. So watching the movement of the transiting vertex is really fun. And that was kind of a magical moment. And I ended up marrying the man. Now, let me tell you a secondary thing, okay? That vertex did not make an aspect to his vertex on the day we met. As a matter of fact, it made no aspect to his planets in his natal chart. What was interesting was this. My sun sign is trining his vertex in his natal seventh house by one degree. Is that crazy? It is so powerful. So let me keep telling you a little bit more. (laughs) On our first weekend getaway, where we both overwhelmingly felt, and I love you, and you are going to die when you hear this. I can't even believe this. I went back in time and looked it up. I had no idea this was happening. And the vertex moves so quickly, I think you'd have a really hard time controlling every three minutes of your life, right? Like, oh my God, oh my God, the vertex is going to be the vertex. Oh, oh, no, I don't even live that way, even though I am an astrologer, but I do like to go back and I do like to look because I like to see what is the meaning of that. We went away on our very first trip where we both kind of mutually said, I love you for the very first time. We both confessed it out loud in the spoken word. The vertex was exact conjunct. I'm not joking on his Venus. Exact conjunct. It was crazy. How do I know that? 
because I am a crazy astrologer and I write these things down. I write down when the first I love you was said. I write down when the first date was. And by the way, I was late. And so it took place at 618. <laughs> Not 615, but 618. So it matters. It's really cool to look up your relationship with your parents and your children. So I looked up um, the vertex in my chart in relationship, in sinistry, right, to my dad, my beloved dad. And I was just like so taken aback. I discovered this a long time ago. His vertex is conjunct my Venus. Um, also, he was adopted and I had to rectify my birth chart. So what if I'm off by four minutes, right? But I can tell it's there. I also want to say that I looked at my mom's chart with me. We also are very, very close. And this you're going to find really, really fascinating, super interesting. My Pluto is exact on her vertex. Exact. That's a conjunction. Now, you might think that that is something awful, but let me tell you one more part of the story, and this is where it is so juicy. And by the way, these relationships that I'm talking about, they're not like regular love relationships. They're really deeply profound. So the relationship that I had with my dad, with my mom, and with my daughter, they're just super deep. It's almost like the umbilical cord never really got cut either way. These are the most uh, influential people in my life. And I don't talk about my chart very often. I do with my members. And so a lot of my members know my chart, um, but I just don't put it out there on the internet. I have my Pluto exact on my mom's vertex. Now my daughter has her Pluto exact on my vertex. Is that crazy? Is that crazy? There is something about astrology that I absolutely love, and that is the astrological family tree. And what you will notice is that you inherit the astrological DNA of your ancestors' charts. And the wounds, the psychological Pluto wounds especially, really are passed down um, from generation to generation to generation. And my daughter has my story in some ways, and in some ways, I have my mother's story. And in some ways, my mother has her mother's story. Now, they're all with different generations and a little different cultures, if you will, inside American culture, little subcultures, but it is very fascinating. So you're probably sitting there wondering like, oh my gosh, Meredith, how can Pluto, Pluto conjunct vertex be a good thing? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is it's an intense thing. There is um, usually a little bit of a fear of loss. There is usually a dynamic power play at play a psychological wounding and healing that comes through this relationship. This is a very deep and profound and transformative relationship. These relationships that I mentioned, mine with my mother and mine with my daughter and the inversion of that are profoundly loving, but there's something kind of instinctually protective, like I would die for you, sacrificial love transformative love. While my mom is always very love loving, she was kind of a tough love mom as well, not necessarily an indulgent mom. Like I wasn't spoiled. Um, I had to learn my lessons kind of the hard way a lot of the time. Now, she was super bright, very, very bright and a great teacher to me, but she truly is one of the major mega catalysts in my life that has helped me transform into probably my better self. And I hope one day my daughter will say the same thing about me. I will tell you that one thing my mother never did that kind of hurt my feelings in high school and college, because my other friends got this, is my mother never gave me false flattery. And isn't that Plutonian? So if I wanted a compliment, I truly had to earn that compliment through my hard work, my perseverance, and my integrity. Basically, I had to bring the receipts. Yeah. Now, it wasn't done in a cynical, cruel way. It was just, I'm not going to tell you that you look good in that outfit if I really don't think you do. I'm going to teach you probably <laughs> how to transform that outfit to make it flattering on you. That was about me at 14. So there was no false flattery. There was brutal honesty. And now what's interesting about this is that my mom is the person I go to when I need to hear the very hard to hear 
truth. The thing that's going to kind of sting or burn or hurt to know, to hear, what do I need to change about this? Or what did I do wrong in this scenario or situation? My mom's going to tell me the truth. She is not going to give me false flattery. It is not going to be like, oh, my child, you're just so perfect. You're so great. Mm -mm. And she holds my feet to the fire in the most loving way. She has a cancer. It is done in a loving way. The same with my daughter. Now, remember, her Pluto is on my vertex. So she is also like that with me. And I am like that with her. So those relationships become brutally honest. Now, if you have enough positive aspects in your synastry or in your own chart, if you're a healthy human being, you can handle a Pluto vertex conjunction. Thank God. If I was a, a, a desperately insecure person or not hel healthy, I probably couldn't handle those truths. Those would probably hurt and squash me and squish me, which I'm sure some of them did along the way, um, and I wouldn't grow myself out of them. But I really do think I became a healthier person because of the depth of this relationship that I had with my mom and my dad. And now, hopefully, I'm passing that on. Say a little prayer for me <laughs> to my daughter. Those are some powerful, deeply personal vertex stories for you. And I cannot wait to share with you what it means in my members only video, what it means to have those different planets on your vertex by transit, by synastry, by solar return, and by progression. And I have to show you guys my earrings. Oh my God, look at these. <gasps> Aren't these gorgeous? So I rarely get a gift from a client but Warren in Thailand sent me these, and you guys will always see her in the comments, and oftentimes she does my um, timestamps. Not always, but sometimes. She sent me these. Are they not so beautiful? I hope I can show you. They're so beautiful. I had to wear them. I've been dying to wear them, and I wanted to show them off today because I just love them. They are so me. I just love them. So here in Seattle, I'm saying goodbye to you and happy vertex learning, happy astrology learning. I'm so happy that you're on my channel. Please like and subscribe. Help me grow the channel. I'm trying to get to 100,000 by the end of this year. And come see me in Seattle and learn astrology with me. I cannot wait for my next video. I hope you guys are learning so, so much. Bye for now. I'll see you soon.